Hey, what's up all you art geeks out there? Today, we're gonna talk about painting portrait commissions and all the things you need to consider when doing this kind of work. Now, the video we're watching today is actually me painting a commission from a client over in Poland of all places. So we're gonna look at that while we discuss this. I did go ahead and ask ChatGPT what it thinks on this subject. So I put into ChatGPT, tips for painting commission portraits, and it gave me 12 points. We're gonna go through all of these points and start a discussion and see where it goes. Now, before we get into that, I just wanna quickly mention that I do have a Patreon account with a bunch of portrait painting tutorials that will help you through your portrait painting journey. I also have exclusive fine art prints that you can download and print out yourself. So check all of that out. And now we will get back to this discussion on portrait painting commissions. And right off the bat, the intro to this subject that ChatGPT wrote was painting commission portraits can be a rewarding endeavor, both creatively and financially. Here are some tips to help you excel in this area. And I do like the first one. It starts off really well. Number one, understand the client's expectations. And this is one that I've gradually gotten better and better at over the years, trying to figure out what the client wants because every client is a little bit different. Usually one of the first questions I'll ask the client is, do you want your work to be very abstracted? Do you wanna be able to recognize the subject that you want me to paint? Or do you want it to be a little bit more fine-tuned so that you can see the eyes, nose, mouth? That's my usual first question. Because my usual work is fairly abstracted, it's always a good starting question to see what kind of level of detail they want. If you are doing portraits and all of your work is very consistent and has a high level of detail, that maybe isn't a question you need to ask, but you may jump to things like, okay, do you want this to be zoomed in right on the head? Do you want to see the shoulders, some hands? Uh, what pictures did you have in mind? Do you have photos that you want me to use? Would it be okay to have the subject come in and have me take some photos of the subject so that I can control the lighting and make it feel just like my work? Now with this client, this one was very unique because they were in Poland. I didn't have any control of the photography completely. I looked through some photos they sent me, but none of them really worked for what I was going for. So I asked if we could do a Zoom call and maybe walk around the house and see if we can find some good lighting in their home that would work to make it feel more like my work where there's a lot more dynamic uh, lighting and things like that. So I had them go into a room where there was one single light source and positioned the daughter so she could be getting just the right kind of light. And I said, okay, this is what we wanna go with. Let's get some pictures of her sitting here. So I let the mother take some photos after the Zoom call. She sent me quite a few and we went through a bunch of them and they actually turned out to be very similar to my work. It had a nice level of shadow and light exposure and I was able to find one that worked. So that was one of the first big hurdles was getting that photo out of the way, getting the expectations of which photo we're gonna use. And then I took the photo, I put it into Photoshop, I tried some different color combinations, some different compositions, so that we could lock in on a composition, the level of darkness versus light and the overall uh, setup of the painting. All these things were put into place through Photoshop, which is a very quick way to get the ball rolling. All right, the second one is gather reference material. And I guess we already talked about this a bit, so I don't need to talk about this a lot. I will say that it does tend to work out better if you use your own photos, especially if you've learned to take really dynamic photos. Usually client photos are not thinking about lighting as much. They just want a nice picture of whoever it is they want uh, painted. So you may wanna suggest that they come in, take some photos so that you can get the lighting the way you want it, or go outside and get some good lighting from the outdoors. All right, number three is choose the right materials. I think this is a valid point by ChatGPT. You don't want to be using low quality paints. You want to have a, especially a high quality surface to paint on. You don't want to give them some bargain priced canvas or panel that just won't give you that sort of high quality look to your final work. Brushes, I don't know. Sometimes I think that brushes can be lower quality. It really depends on the style you're after. I have some brushes that are older that I've been using for a long time, and sometimes those older brushes will just give you a unique brush stroke that you can't get from a brand new brush. All right, number four, I don't really do this one, but it's practice sketching, and it says here, before starting the final painting, create a preliminary sketch to plan the composition and capture the likeness of the subject. And if you don't like Photoshop, if you're not very computer literate, or you just don't understand Photoshop or any of those programs like it, 
for sure, definitely do some sketches, get the location of the head, throw some quick colors in there. Don't get too detailed with it and give that to the client to make sure you're on the right path. I find that this is a little bit more time consuming than I want to deal with. So I love using Photoshop. I'm very well versed in it. So Photoshop's just so handy when it comes to these preliminary ideas. So check that out. But if you're old school, you want to do some sketching initially to make sure that the client is happy with the direction you're going, by all means do that. All right, number five, it's so obvious, but we're going to talk about it for a second, and that is focus on likeness. This one, of course, you need to make it look like the person in the photo reference. You want the client to be happy that it looks like the person they asked you to paint. All this is very obvious, but let's get into how you can do that. Well, you could trace, you could freehand, you could use grids and guides measuring tools, all those things that really help you lock in the likeness. Now for me personally, I love doing freehand painting. There's always gonna be a little bit of human error in there. There's always gonna be something that's just a hair off, but it's never enough not to see the likeness of the person. Now, if you're a little nervous about the likeness not coming through, especially if you're not a great freehand painter, uh, feel free to use grids and guides, whatever can get you through. But the one thing you can't really transfer over is shading. Getting the lighting accurate is never gonna be done with tracing. So you can have the perfect tracing and your light and shadow could be off a whole bunch and it just won't look right. So you need to work on your freehand painting. You need to work on seeing light and dark and all the tones in between. All right, now number six is another no-brainer, I would say, but it's studying facial anatomy and proportions. You definitely need to understand what you're looking at when you're painting. The way I go about this is I see and understand the face before I get started. I see the facial structure, but I also understand how the lighting is affecting it. Seeing the lighting and how the light and dark is interacting is almost as important, if not more important, than understanding the anatomy. Because if you can understand what you're seeing from light to dark, if you can see how all the shapes are being formed by the light hitting the subject, this will help you so much with getting the proportions correct. I'm all about seeing the shapes within the subject. So do whatever you can to see those proportions, especially if you're freehanding. My Patreon tutorials are great at helping with this part of the process. Of course, number seven is gonna be exactly what I was just talking about, but it's pay attention to lighting and shadow. So I'm not even gonna talk about that one again. We just went over that. All right, number eight, I talked about this one already, but this one is work from general to specific. So if you're a free hand painter, you're gonna to have to learn a method that works where you can get those big general blocked in shapes first and then find the shapes within those shapes and then start working on the details and get it to a level that you're comfortable with. This is the way I love to paint and this way is fairly popular with a lot of portrait painters out there that freehand. There's many variations to how to do this, but if you go from big shapes to small shapes and you can see those shapes clearly and understand what you're seeing, this is a great way to paint portraits accurately without any grids or guides or tracing. Okay, number nine, this is something I mention a lot in my Patreon tutorials, it's take breaks and step back. There are so many things about my portraits that I will see differently if I take just a five minute break, I walk away from my painting and come back, I will see so many errors, but also if you just take a step back, if you get really far away from your painting, you'll start to see the overview of what you've painted so far, and you will see things in a completely different way. Many classic painters have done it this way. It's such a popular method to see things from a different perspective. Now, if you're working in a small studio and you don't have a lot of room to step back, I would recommend just taking a photo with your phone and looking at it on your phone because that'll shrink it down and let you see it as if you're stepping back. But getting back to taking breaks, if you take a five minute break, that's great. But if you take a whole day break, let your brain completely forget about what you've been doing with the painting, you will see a bunch of new things. So I would recommend before considering a painting done, I would give it a full day to make sure that you didn't miss something because there are so many times when I say something's done the day of the day I just finished painting and then I come in the next day I go oh my gosh there's all these little things that are driving me crazy and I'll need to fix those. All right number 10 I do disagree with this one a little bit and it's communicate with the client throughout the process. I don't personally like to show my clients progress pics. 
I find that when you show a client a progress pic where you're just getting maybe just a rough draft in, you don't have everything fine tuned, they're gonna make comments that really don't apply to where you're at with the painting. I'd rather get the whole painting done and make changes from there. And that's just how I like to do it. If you're working on abstracts or something where maybe you don't have a really good concept like I do at the very beginning stages, you may wanna show them progress pics. But since I show them a nice final composition through Photoshop before I get started, I feel confident that it will work out better if I show them the final painting before they make any changes. All right, number 11, super obvious, but it's sign and seal the finished painting. Well, yes, sign it, seal it, find the varnishes that you like. There's matte, there's satin, there's glossy. I'm a glossy fan because I have a lot of dark blacks in my painting, so those come out the best with a glossy finish. All right, now the final one, this one's very obvious, but you gotta market yourself, that's number 12. Promote yourself through things like social media, website, art galleries, word of mouth. These are all places to do it, but the basic rule is the more people that know about you, the better chance you're gonna get work. All right, well that was all 12. Great work by ChatGPT in leading this discussion once again. I only disagree with ChatGPT, I think once or twice, so great work there. There were a lot of great points. One of the first ones, understand your client's expectations. That is a great way to start. Just making your client happy in general. I think that's overall what we're trying to do. So if you do want to learn more about oil painting, especially with portraits, go over, check out my Patreon account. There's a lot of great tutorials on there, art downloads, like I mentioned before. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for checking out another video. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.